son is great, man. This is, this is called having a good time. Hello Classic Rock fans, I am reporting just a couple of days after seeing Daryl Hall and Todd Rundgren play at the Riverside Theater in Milwaukee. This was part of Daryl's Live from Daryl's House tour uh, that he's been on this year, uh, which is his first uh, solo tour, if you will, in like over 10 years. Uh, typically he tours, of course, with John Oates, but uh, this time he is taking Todd Rundgren out on the road with him. Um, and although Todd opened the shows, uh, he also comes out and plays with Daryl at the end of Daryl's set as well. So, very cool. Now the tour is called Live from Daryl's House, which is an obvious reference to Daryl's uh, popular uh, TV series of the same name. That's a very well-reviewed uh, series that has featured collaborations with a lot of big-name artists and a lot of really good performances so if you're a classic rock fan you should definitely be checking that out and i guess daryl has a few more episodes on the way he talked about that a little bit during his set so i will talk about that later uh and i think this tour was meant at least in part to drum up support and interest for that show but before we talk about daryl i will talk about todd rundgren briefly now i will say I'm not a big Todd Rundgren fan. Not because I dislike him, but because I don't know a whole lot of his work. I know he is a multi-instrumentalist with a huge career going back to, like, the early 70s. You know, he's in a couple of bands. I know he did production work. I just don't know a lot of his music. So I, I'm not terribly familiar with him. So going to the show on Friday night, I was just kind of looking forward to being uh, exposed to some of it because I haven't sought it out on my own previously. The one song of his that I do know is called We Gotta Get You a Woman, uh, which is a very funny song. I know that song from this CD. This CD is the Robocop TV series soundtrack. and I bought this CD a long time ago uh, because it has some Joe Walsh songs on it. But hearing Todd's We Gotta Get You a Woman was like <laughs> a nice surprise on the CD. Uh, because it's a pretty funny song. In fact, <laughs> I have a funny memory from, again, way long ago, uh, driving around with a buddy of mine who was sort of uh, lamenting about being perpetually single. And uh, in an effort to get him to shut up, <laughs> I played this, this song, We Gotta Get You a Woman, uh, for him. <laughs> and we had a good laugh about that, so that was a fun little memory. But it was a fun little memory that I thought of on Friday night watching Todd Rundgren because he played this song and I wasn't expecting him to do it. So that was a nice treat for me personally. And it's not just a fun song, it's a good song. Even though I, again, I didn't know most of the songs he was playing, I was enjoying them and he, he sounded really good uh, vocally. So if you are a Todd Rundgren fan, I'm sure you're going to uh, enjoy this part of the show as he's still playing at a, at a high level. But I will mention my only complaint. Okay, now my only complaint about Todd's set list is the omission of a certain song that means a great deal to a whole bunch of us in the great state of Wisconsin. And that song is Bang On My Drum All Day, which has a close connection to a team that many of us here in Wisconsin cheer for in the NFL. I'm talking, of course, about the Green Bay Packers. Yes, <laughs> I was born and raised in Milwaukee, lived here my whole life, of course. I'm a Packers fan, and for those of you who don't know, if you go to Lambeau Field in Green Bay, whenever the Packers score a touchdown, the PA system plays Bang On My Drum All Day as the celebration song, without fail. Every Packers touchdown bang on my drum all day. It has been this way since 1985. Is this a particularly important fact? <laughs> no. <laughs> the song was not really a big hit. I know it's a song that I don't think matters a whole lot to Todd. In the grand scheme of his full discography, I've read that he's described the song as a bit of a throwaway even though he does appreciate that it has registered with Packers fans. 
That said, he does play the song live from time to time. I know it's probably not part of most set lists when he goes out on tour. In fact, I looked up some of his old set lists from past shows in Milwaukee and Wisconsin, and he very rarely plays it here, if ever. So I guess this is sort of a greater complaint uh, about him <laughs> at large uh, when he comes to playing Wisconsin. Um, I don't know, I, I just feel like a, a song like that that has such a close connection to a specific region, it's not a big ask to, I guess, hope that he adds it to his set list as sort of a special treat for one specific audience. I'm sure some people might think it's cheap or cheesy, but I think when an artist does a song specifically for a certain town or area, that is showing appreciation for fans that connected to a particular song in their discography. And yeah, I wasn't really expecting Todd to play Bang On My Drum all day uh, on Friday night, but I'm sure I was not the only one in the audience who was quietly crossing his fingers and hoping that he might bust it out as sort of a nice surprise for us Wisconsin fans, many of whom I'm sure were introduced to Todd in the first place because they heard the song at Lambeau Field sometime in the past 40 years. You know, that was the first song of his that I knew. But at the end of the day, I can see it's obviously a song that doesn't mean a whole lot to him. Uh, he doesn't do it all that often. It's not the most important thing he ever wrote. Yes, this is very much a hometown complaint. Uh, it's not a major complaint. It doesn't take away from the show. It was just, to me, an opportunity um, to take an already good show and kind of take it to that next level, making it a little extra special. It was a missed opportunity, in my opinion. But I did end up hearing Bang On My Drum All Day after all that night, as when we left the venue and we're walking back to our car, there was a street musician busking outside of the Riverside playing flipped over buckets as drums, bang on my drum all day. <laughs> uh, with a, a backing track, of course. But yeah, it was very funny to walk out of the Riverside and kind of be having that song in the back of my head and then hearing it and seeing at least someone playing the damn song. Uh, how cool would it have been if in that moment Todd Rundgren himself came out of the front doors of the Riverside, sat down next to this young man playing the uh, bucket drums, and just started singing along. How great would that have been? <laughs> but alas, that did not happen. Anyway, moving on to the main event, Daryl Hall. So this is Daryl's first solo tour in over a decade. Viewers of this channel might remember a previous video I did some months back uh, with the hosts of the Stephanie and Stephanie Talk Tunes podcast. As part of our Halloween special, we took a look at a clip of an interview that Daryl Hall did on Bill Maher's podcast, in which Daryl expressed some frustration over being forever associated with John Oates. I don't have a partner. You not... think John Oates is my partner? You still tour together, don't you? Yeah, but he's not my partner. Well, you're part... He's my business partner. Uh, he's oh, not geez, my... well, look what I've stumbled into here. He's, I, not, I, he's I... not my creative partner. If you're a Daryl Hall fan, you probably know this about him, but Daryl is very particular about being seen as a solo artist who has done albums with John Oates, but it's not a partnership. He bristles at the term partner. It's a very important point to him. It's so important, it honestly strikes me as a bit odd. But you can find a whole litany of interviews he's done going back to their heyday in the early 80s where he talks about how important it is to him that they are seen as separate solo artists. And the reason for this is because he thinks he is much more responsible for Hall & Oates's success than John is. So I think doing this solo tour is important for him as an artist to be able to do from time to time, and that sort of helps him break away from maybe the trapping the sea feels of touring as Daryl Hall and John Oates. 
you know, it's easier for him to establish himself when he's out on the road on his own, uh, as opposed to when John comes with him. And that was reflected in the set list as well, because he did not do a whole lot of the big radio hits that Hall & Oates had. He did a couple, and he did some songs that were Hall & Oates songs, but uh, I believe almost everything he played tonight uh, were songs that he wrote on his own, tracks that he's particularly proud of. And that made for a good show for Daryl Hall fans specifically, but I fear that casual Hall & Oates, maybe radio listeners, might be left a little disappointed. So I'll, I'll go through some of the songs he played. First, let's talk about the Hall & Oates tracks. The second song he did in his set list was Romeo is Bleeding, which is a Hall & Oates track, but it is one he wrote on his own, and it is one I know he is very proud of. And I know he's very proud of that because he talked about it at length on that um, podcast he did with Bill Maher. One of my all-time favorite records, not just of yours, but of all time, Romeo is Bleeding. Oh, man, is, thank you. Is that a, was that a hit? Was that a single? No, it was not a really? hit. Really? I, I don't even love, know where I first I love that song so much. So much. I, I, Bill, you're pulling out stuff that I really care about. This is this is. Well, I mean, as much as I love talking to you here, Throw the I could just listen oh, to Romeo is Bleeding I know, I, all day long. That song, man, it's, it's and, a, and the lyrics. I, I was like, whoa, what, did so, I, what was I talking about? I'll tell, tell you a funny story. And after hearing it live, I can see why he's proud of it, because it is a really good song. So it was you know, cool for me to sort of hear about that song in that interview and then just a couple of months later, you know, see it performed live. That is a good track and, you know, again, diehard Hall & Oates fans will know it and like it, but it wasn't a radio hit, so more casual fans might not be familiar. Uh, a little bit later on in the set, he did his original version of a song that was a big hit for somebody else the track Every Time You Go Away. Now that song was originally recorded by Hall & Oates, but it was a big hit in the early 80s by a guy named Paul Young. In fact, it was Paul Young's biggest hit. So I think Daryl was you know, doing this to, again, recenter his own songwriting in this tour. But for fans of 80s music, this was a nice treat. I like when artists do this kind of thing. I like when artists play songs that they wrote which were hits for other artists. I remember I saw Sammy Hagar years ago, and he did his original version of I've Done Everything For You, which wasn't a hit for him, but it later became a big hit for Rick Springfield. <laughs> and he told a fun story about that song. Daryl Hall did something similar. He mentioned that it was a big hit for Paul Young. You know, he said that they're friends, and then he did his version of the song. That's cool. That's music history. And a nice treat for... 80s music fans, and I'm sure there were plenty of those in the audience. <laughs> so after that, he moved over to the piano, and he played a track called Sacred Songs, which is the title track from, I think, his debut solo album. Now, that album was produced by Robert Fripp from King Crimson, which is a prog rock band, very left-of-the-dial sort of act that you might not associate with uh, Daryl Hall, but it turns out that Robert and Daryl are, are very good friends, and he said that one of the new episodes of Live at Daryl's House is going to feature Robert Fripp, and I gotta say, that's pretty cool, because that's a music connection that not a lot of people would know about, and a connection that most people wouldn't even think exists, and they made a great record together. And the song he played was good, and I'm really excited to see what they're going to do on that episode, so keep an eye out for that. A little bit later in the night, he talked about another episode of Live at Daryl's House, which was with uh, Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics. Dave Stewart also worked with Daryl in the past. In fact, I think he produced that Romeo is Bleeding song that I mentioned earlier. You know who that made that record? Me and Dave Stewart. Mm. That's not John. That's me and Dave Stewart. Oh, John is not on that? No. Oh. <laughs> it's a Hall & Oates record, but that doesn't mean it. Okay. And as sort of a tribute or shout-out to uh, Dave Stewart, 
Daryl played a piano version of the Rhythmics Here Comes the Rain Again. A little different, uh, definitely slower and, you know, obviously more piano driven than the original, but still cool to see. I like when artists uh, do cover songs in concert, and this one was one I was definitely not expecting, so that was a nice little treat. And then after that, finally, we started to hear some of the big famous hits from Hall and & Oates. And, uh, and he wrapped up his set with Sarah Smile and I Can't Go For That, No Can Do. Now, these are both great songs. Casual Hall & Oates fans are finally getting some of the meat and potatoes that they have been waiting for. And he did great versions of both of those songs. The fans in the audience responded immediately and very well. And the only problem is that it was all too fleeting. It was all too quick. Even though he did an extended version of I Can't Go For That. And then after I Can't Go For That, it was a brief encore break, came back, uh, did another Hall & Oates song called Wait For Me. Uh, he did that with Todd Rundgren. Todd Rundgren came out and joined him on that. Wait For Me was a sort of mid-hit of theirs in the late 70s. So diehard Hall & Oates fans might know it, but Casual fans might not even recognize it. After that, they did a Todd Rundgren song called Can We Still Be Friends? And then they covered another song called Expressway to Your Heart. Todd exited the stage, and Daryl gave us one last big number with the classic You Make My Dreams Come True from Hall & Oates, which is, again, finally, <laughs> for the more casual listener of Hall & Oates, one big hit for them at the end. And it was great. Of, of course, Daryl Hall is still performing at a very high level. He sings wonderfully. Uh, the band behind him is very tight. Uh, in particular, he's got a saxophonist who was a lot of fun to watch. So it's a good band, and Daryl is still an artist who performs very, very well. So I don't really have any criticisms of the stuff that was actually presented to us. Like, all of the songs were good, and they were played very well. Again, like with what I said with Tom Rundgren, my criticism would be the exclusion of a couple of songs. <laughs> Even in the context of a show like this, I think fans would want to hear one or two more big hits. I think it would have um, taken this show from something that I definitely recommend for fans of Daryl Hall and put it at the level of a show I recommend to anyone who's a fan of music from that classic rock era. I don't want to say specifically classic rock fans because Daryl is not specifically just classic rock. He is bigger than that genre. He, you know. But if you're a classic R&B fan, again, you're probably going to know the Hall & Oates radio hits. And I wish Daryl was a little less sparing with those. Add one or two more of those songs to the set list and now you have a show that I can give a full endorsement for really anybody who likes this era of music. I think it just leaned a little too heavy uh, to the stuff that maybe Daryl enjoys playing more. Uh, but, but if I'm perfectly honest, and I'm sorry Todd Rundgren fans, but this is just how I feel. Cut Todd Rundgren's set by two songs? And then add those two big hits of Hall & Oates to Daryl's set and have Daryl do 17 songs instead of 15. Because here's something I, I didn't mention either. Tom Brundgren's the opening act, but he plays almost as long as Daryl does. Todd played for over an hour, and Daryl played for about an hour and a half. That's not typical for opening acts. I would have... If we're micromanaging here, I would have cut two songs off of uh, Todd Rundgren, so uh, Daryl would have room for two more songs in his set list, and I would have had those uh, be two big uh, radio hits from Hall & Oates to satisfy more casual fans in attendance. If you disagree with me, feel free to tell me what you think in the comments below. I only mention this because I did note that this was not a full house. In fact, the reason I was there is because we got discounted tickets. When these tickets initially went on sale, the price was enough that I was iffy about it, and I wasn't totally sold on if I wanted to go. Now, that's not Daryl's fault, necessarily. In fact, I think it's uh, largely the fault of, you know, the promoters and the venues. And it wasn't until that the venue dropped the price 
uh, a bit for a day or whatever the sale was that you know I decided okay let's get some tickets and go and I went with a friend but when we were there we did notice that the seats behind us in the upper level of the Riverside Theater there were some big empty spaces and I just keep going back to that conversation I had earlier this year with Kofi Baker about the struggles that mid-level theater acts are facing this year and are probably going to keep facing because now it's not just the after effects of COVID. I mean, now we're dealing with a lot of economic uh, challenges, you know, with inflation. And yes, ticket prices right now for most shows are inflated. None of this is Daryl's fault, you know, so I'm, I, I don't mean to, to put any blame on Daryl for that. Um, I will just say that if you're a more casual fan of Hollow Notes, maybe look up the songs that he's going to do before you go to see if you like them. And if you do, well then absolutely. But if you're going, hoping that you're going to hear mostly Hollow Notes classics, that's not going to be the case. The underlying fact of all of this is that Daryl Hall is performing at a very high level. It really just comes down to which songs do you want to hear. If he's doing the songs that you want to hear, or if you like the songs he's doing, yes, go. Uh, if you're not familiar or not sure, well, then you got to make a judgment call based on whatever the venue's charging. So in closing, the show was good, and uh, keep an eye out for those new episodes of Live from Daryl's House. Um, with that, thank you so much for watching this review. If you're a fan of classic rock or live concerts in general, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and uh, check out some of the other videos I've done on this channel. I can almost guarantee I've reviewed a different show by an artist that you're a fan of. You can check that out here. And if you are a fan of classic rock, if you didn't know, I host a podcast about classic rock, and I think you would enjoy that as well. We did a lot of great interviews in 2022, but like Daryl, I also do solo episodes, and more of those are coming down the pipeline. So again, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and find us on social media, Facebook, and while we still have it, Twitter. Those links are all in the description below. Also in the description is a link to the video I discussed earlier, the conversation I had with Stephanie Pena and Stephanie Myers from the Stephanie and Stephanie Talk Tunes podcast, in which we explored uh, Daryl's appearance on the Bill Maher podcast. And if you want to go even further, I've also included a link to the episode of the Vintage Rock Pod This Day Rocks, which was posted on Daryl's birthday uh, a few weeks back, in which I was a guest on to discuss, of all things, Daryl's recurring insistence that he is a solo artist separate from John Oates. So if you're interested in learning more about that dynamic, please check out that link as well. With that, thank you again for watching. Have yourself a great night. See Daryl if he comes to town. And keep rocking.